Hello, I'm Dr. Jung Palaranesia, pediatric plastic surgeon in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, at the British Columbia Children's Hospital and at the University of British Columbia. And I will be providing a video discussion today on the paper entitled Gender and Satisfaction with Appearance in Children with Craniofacial Anomalies. The purpose of this paper was to study patient and parent reported outcome measures with respect to face and body satisfaction post reconstruction. The group hypothesized that girls with craniofacial anomalies may be at higher risk as compared to boys based on gender. When the group looked at their methods, the question they studied was self and parent ratings of child satisfaction. I felt the methodology was sound, it was appropriate, and the statistical analysis was rigorous. When we looked at the results and conclusions, they found that there was little agreement between parents and their children with respect to facial appearance. Additionally, there were discrepant findings between girls and their parents. This indicated that satisfaction with appearance is gendered and may have downstream consequences with respect to psychosocial functioning. So my comments for this paper were, were firstly, I would commend the authors for studying this subject. I think that there's a clear gra gap in the literature on patient reported outcomes stratified based on gender. And I think this is an important addition to the literature. When you looked at their methodology, specifically the study population, although the title suggested that they were studying girls with craniofacial deformities, the study population is primarily cleft lip and palate patients. And I would argue that it's difficult to study a heterogeneous group of patients. Therefore, the utility of this manuscript is probably best for cleft lip and palate population because cleft palate alone outcomes are primarily speech driven, with mid face outcomes a secondary outcome measure, and that would be beyond the scope of this paper. The second comment I'd offer is that when we look at patient reported outcome measures, I think that this is a clear advance in our plastic surgery research over the past five years. However, I think it's imperative not to throw out surgeon reported outcome measures either. And I think that going forward, a combination of patient and surgeon reported outcome measures would be the accepted and essentially gold standard. My only real criticism of this paper is that given the fact that these authors found no difference between face and body ratings, it would have been interesting to compare the female subset in this study with a control cohort. Perhaps the girls in this age demographic have significant self-esteem, self-concept issues as a population in total. To their credit, this limitation was certainly recognized by the authors and included in their limitations section. The fourth comment I would make is related to gender. And specifically related to this paper, the findings of dissatisfaction in facial appearance in girls is not surprising since the marketing strategies exhibited via mainstream media have a profound impact on girls. Magazine covers, music videos, and advertisements for cosmetics and the like illustrate the importance of a flawless face. And this is, from a very young age, built into the psyche of young girls. So as a surgeon and at the patient vanguard, how can surgeons incorporate not only the effect of mainstream media on young girls, as well as the findings of this study in an affected population? Of course, the goal of research is to advance science, and these authors have given plastic, surgeon, plastic surgeons and clinicians some fodder. We need to be more sensitive to the effects of gender and recognize and incorporate these differences, and specifically when we treat our patients. And I think that this is a true value add from this paper. The final point I'll make is that team-based care is critical. So this study highlights the importance of a multidisciplinary team in the assessment of complex medical and surgical problems such as cleft lip and palate. In fact, 18 of their 36 references were from psychology, sociology, or other quality of life journals. Therefore, it is very clear that cross-pollination in this report with the social and behavioral sciences is critical foundation to advance our plastic surgical study, and I'm very excited to see future research in this subject in our journal. Thank you for your attention.